Hello, welcome to the Deploy Configuration using the Juniper.Device Ansible Collection. I'm Gordon Mosley with the Education Services Department at Juniper Networks. Let's get started. After watching this learning bite, you will be able to deploy configuration to Juno's platforms using Ansible and the Juniper.Device Ansible Collection. The Juniper.Device Ansible Collection is a series of freely available Python modules that enable you to manage your Junos OS devices using Ansible playbooks. They are available in Ansible Galaxy, and you can use the Ansible Galaxy install collection command, copy them to your system. Now you're able to create playbooks that leverage these libraries to load configuration, execute operational mode commands, perform device operations, all using Ansible playbooks. Now, the Juniper.Device Ansible collection does have a dependency. It leverages free Juno's PyEZ Python library to handle the actual connection to the managed devices. So this is what we'll use. These Python libraries, specifically the load configuration, we're going to use the config Python library. There are three key components that you're going to use to deploy configuration to your Junos devices using Ansible. The first one that we're going to look at is the Ansible playbook itself. One I use, there is one play. You can name the play whatever you like. This is where we start tying these different components together. You will identify the host that you would like the task in this playbook to be run against. And for me, in my, this particular playbook, the hosts are listed as core. Well, this ties into my Ansible inventory file. I'm using the default Etsy Ansible hosts inventory file. You, you can use other inventory files if you'd like. And I've grouped the devices. There are nine of them. I'm building what's called a metro network for some labs and proof of concept. And there are seven core devices, and currently there are two edge devices. And I want the tasks in this playbook to only deploy configuration to the devices in my Ansible inventory core group. And I've listed them here by name. So I also had to go in to the Etsy host file on my Ansible workstation and create entries. So these names can be resolved to the IP addresses, the management IP addresses of my VMX devices. You can list all hosts here, or I can also say I want to deploy this configuration just to the host in the edge Ansible inventory groups. There's a lot of flexibility here with how this or where this configuration can be deployed. Now my first task, oh, well, let me explain this. The Juniper.Device collection, the Python modules that are included are executed on the Ansible controller. So when this playbook is executed, the Python modules and the playbook are not copied down to the VMX devices or the ACX devices. They're actually executed on the Ansible controller by establishing a netconf over SSH connection to all the managed devices and then executing the task over that connection. And so this is an optional task. You don't have to include this, but it's, it's kind of a recommended best practice. And it leverages the built-in Ansible wait for module. And really what I'm doing here to deploy configuration, each of my managed devices must have NetComp over SSH enabled in the configuration because that's how these modules work. And so it's going to check each host based on their inventory host name. This is one of the world's greatest variables because what it's going to do since I'm running this task, this play against the host in the core Ansible inventory group, it's simply going to crawl through this group and host VMX1. Let me verify that TCP port 830 is available. This host is listening on that port. That's the default NetConf over SSH port. So before I try to perform any tasks related to loading configuration, I can't even get to this task if this is not successful. And so that's what the built-in wait for library enables you to do. Again, it's not necessary, but it's a kind of a best practice to just, let's just check. And then the second task is the main focus 
of this learning byte. Now we're ready to load and commit configuration. And we're going to leverage the Juniper.device Ansible Collection config module. I'm going to go back a slide. That's this one that we had highlighted, right? So that's the module I want to use. And it has multiple methods available. And one of them is I'd like to load some configuration. I can do override. I can merge. I can replace all of the configuration options that are available to you through the Juno CLI are available here. The default timeout is 10 seconds if you don't specify anything. I just increase that because every once in a while, just the load, the commit, it can take a few Mississippi to finish. So if anything times out, you can bump that value to work better for you. Now, so I want to load some configuration on the host in the core Ansible inventory group. Where is the configuration that I want to load? Well, there's a source option. And I'm logged in as a username lab. And so my working directory, home lab, I created a directory called configs. Now, this is important. What it, where I need to be in the home lab directory when I run this playbook because it's going to look for configuration from this source, the configs folder. And here's our magic inventory hostname variable again. Isn't this neat? Because in the configs folder, it's important that you name the directories that store the configuration the same as the name that you listed for that host in the Ansible inventory file that you're using to run this playbook. These are, that's what I'm saying. These are the three key components. And so when I run this playbook for each device in the core inventory group, it's going to find a matching directory. And in that inventory hostname directory, I've created, that's the config file I want you to load. So you can deploy different configuration by simply entering different config file here and use this playbook over and over again. And then you'll see a message pop up while this process is, is going on that will say this, right? And so those are the three key components. I'm going to connect to my Ansible controller now, and we'll see how this works. All right, let me show you some of the Ansible playbooks that I have created. They all, this is to deploy labs. I'm building a metro network so customers can do proof of concept and perform lab exercises in this environment. And so, of course, I want them to be able to easily deploy a good configuration to do this use case, that use case, any use case. And so I'll have different labs that walk people through how to perform different operations on a metro network. And so those are my Ansible playbooks that I've kind of organized, and they all just simply go to that configs folder and do a lab1start.conf, lab2start.conf, right? So the data structure and those three key components we mentioned, once you get those set up, it's really easy to reuse and modify these components to meet your needs. Let's look at the configs. So here were the folders, and we can take a look at an individual. I just have different config files for each lab. Now let's look at the inventory. Etsy Ansible host should do it. And, and this is what I was showing you earlier. Really a lot of flexibility here in how you organize your devices, which groups will these tasks run against. Really, really great flexibility, for example, to run a playbook against your development devices, then against your testing and staging and production environments, just simply by managing the inventory groups that you have. So let's run the playbook. To deploy some configuration, you'll, you'll run the Ansible playbook command. You can include a dash I if you want to specify the inventory file that you want to use. I'm using the default Etsy Ansible hosts. And in my ansible.cfg file, I've already said that's the one I want to use. So let's run, for example, the lab. We're going to run the lab one start YAML playbook and deploy some configuration. We first verify the NetConf connectivity. All devices have successfully responded. And now we'll continue with the next task, which is to load and commit the new configuration.
Now, what you'll see is that each of the devices in the core Ansible inventory group were participants in this particular Ansible playbook run. And the configuration of the devices was successfully changed. And both of the tasks in the Ansible playbook, the verify net connectivity and then the load new configuration, both of those tasks completed successfully. So with those three key components, your playbook, your inventory file, and then your configuration file data structure, you can easily leverage the Juniper.device Ansible collection to deploy configuration to your devices using Ansible playbooks. In this learning by, we deployed configuration to Junos OS platforms using Ansible playbooks and the Juniper.device Ansible collection. Thank you very much. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.